Proverbs chapter 12. We're going through Proverbs. We're at a point where you can look at your life in a Bible verse and say, yeah, I'm for the Lord or yeah, I'm for the devil. Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm doing bad. Not all the ver not all the verses are going to apply to you. But it'd be a good point to look at your life because whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. So here's someone that loves instruction. And we got somebody who hates reproof. And we can apply some passages in Proverbs to the church. Do you love to go to church and hear the messages and hear what the Bible has to say from the pulpit? Or do you hate it? And I'm not just talking about your church. I'm talking about do you have your church and other forms of preaching and teaching in your life? I mean, probably still can get on, uh, I can't remember what the name of it was called, man. Uh, those plastic albums, records, still find some on cassette tapes, CDs, MP3 players. Are you fully in love with the instructions of God through the Bible? Or... You don't care about preaching. You hate preaching. You hate Bible teaching. You don't want to have anything to do with Sunday school. You don't have anything to do with, with midweek service. Where do you stand? And brutish is animal-like. You're nothing better than a beast. That's almost like where the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <clears throat> America spends more money on the ones that do not do not do a reproof. Your modern churches today do not reproof you. Matter of fact, the modern salvation movement is you can be saved without repentance. Well, you can't be. Reproof is when, when, the, when the Bible's open, you're a sinner, and God deals with you in your sins through the Holy Spirit using a man of God as a tool. As inspiration, as much as the Bible was written by the inspiration of, of man by the Holy Spirit, so a man can get up in the pulpit, whether it be in the pulpit, whether it be a record, a cassette tape, a CD, MP3 player, a video. I don't have anything. I don't want to watch no, no Bible stuff on YouTube. I want to watch a good man obtain his favor of the Lord. A man of wicked devices will be condemned. So where are you? Are you a good man? Or are you a wicked A good man obtains favor of the Lord. The Lord likes the good man. God will bless the good man. Wicked devices. Haman made gallows to kill Mordecai. That's a wicked device. What's other wicked devices? Fuck. Poker cards. Alcohol bottle or glass or can. Anything used a tool of the world and the devil. Matches can be used as a, as a good good device or a wicked device. To light up your cigarette is not a good device. To light a barbecue so you can have your family have hamburgers and hot dogs, that's a good device. 
Where do you stand? Are you good? Or are you wicked? Are you going to get favor of God or are you going to get condemned? And you got to answer these questions correctly to your life. You just can't think, well, I'm Mr. Wonderful, I'm Mr. Great. No, you got to look at it like, where do I stand, Holy Spirit? When I deal with the public, I get all the time, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, no, you're not good. A man shall not be established by wickedness. But the root of the righteous shall not be moved. You run that back to Psalms chapter 1. Okay, where are you? Are you the wicked man? Or are you the righteous man? If you're wicked, you're not established. And if you're a righteous man, today in the church age, the Christian, if you are built upon the salvation <clears throat> of the gospel of Jesus Christ, by the blood atonement of God, Jesus Christ, you're saved. Nobody's going to pull you up. Paul says through death, through you know, all things where we're, we're, there's nothing going to uh, separate from the love of God. Devils and spiritual powers and but if you're wicked you have no establishment. You go off to a place that's just dark and hellish. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh a shame is rottenness in his, in his bones. Alright? As a wife, are you virtuous? Or are you rottenness? Virtuous woman, you got to go to Proverbs 31 and compare yourself to, to Proverbs 31. You can be a crown of honor. Or you can be ashamed. Is your husband ashamed of you? I met husbands are ashamed of their wives. And rottenness in his bones. You're, you're no worse than arthritis and cancer. got a problem if you're the problem if you're the wife that's, that is likened to arthritis and cancer you, you gotta repent you gotta get right but that virtuous wonder, woman is wonderful where do you stand in that verse the thoughts of the righteous are right but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. How's your thought life? Listen, Christians, our thought lives are not are not completely right and holy. You know, I, I, uh, a Christian lawyer told me today. He said, "Talk," he said, and it's true. I mean, is that moment. That when they come and tell you you can't do what you're doing, man, that flesh comes up and says, oh, yes, I can. And the average person who doesn't know the law of man, he may be saying, hey, I can do what I'm doing. And in actual right, no, you can't. You may think you can do what you're doing, but you can't do do what you're doing. Now, thank God the case wasn't for that for me. But oh, how our thoughts go into thinking about ourselves. How we wonderfully daydream and night dream about our accomplishment. How good or mistreated we can be. And that's a sin. That's not righteous. That needs to be repented of. But the wicked and the consuls are of our deceit. How can we get how can we get you? How can we lie to you? How can we take advantage of you? 
There's been a lot of councils in the last three weeks of us being involved with preaching on the streets, and there's been a lot of lies by the devil side and the world side for the main purpose of getting rid of the gospel. <clears throat> What have been my thoughts? I pray for them. What are their thoughts? What is their counsel? He don't. He he can't be. He can't do what he's doing. Somebody's lying. Because when a man tells you that another man, a lawyer says you can't do what you're doing and then the lawyer comes up and, and quotes the law and says he can do what he's doing I don't know but somebody's got that deceit of counsel and there are people who gather together to deceive others that may be a business meeting, a board meeting, a judicial meeting, a round the table meeting. That ain't right. I went to I had a job one time. I was I was in <clears throat> I was in training, whatever you want to call it, and I don't want to say what the company was and and the, the classes were, I mean, just my words, how to deceive customers to go sell their product. And I, I told him, I said, listen, I, I, I said, you know what? I said, there's no way you're ever going to sell that product to my dad. Oh, any way we can do it, we will go sell it to anybody. Anyway? You mean any you would you would deceive and lie. And when when it talks about the father being the devil by Jesus, Jesus said, Your father is a liar. And not only is he the liar, he is the father of the lie. That's where deceit comes from. And there are occupations known just to go out there and to lie to the people politicians to get what they want and not fulfill what they said they do it's amazing I, 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 my grandpa was a wonderful great guy he's in heaven today and I was a little boy I forget how little I was my grandpa bought brand new cars for the family for himself and for my grandma so he's at the car dealership one day and I'm there as a little boy he took me along and they're at the signing point the, the car is gonna be delivered to him and uh, I remember the guy is talking to my grandpa about the warranty and my grandpa goes well what's the warranty and it's you got it back then you had to pay extra he goes it, it's it's a it's document that uh, you know, we'll cover certain things. I don't know what, I was only a little boy, I don't know what to do. But, you know, if something breaks down, something does that, with this warranty, it will cover. My grandpa's like, wait a minute. Don't you already say you're one of the best car makers and you're one of the great, yeah, and your safety and all that. And my grandpa, you're good. And I go, well, if you're true to what you believe and your workmanship and, and your your safety records and all that. Why would you need to give me a warranty? Or even offer a warranty? That stuck with me. If you're so great on your product, why the warranty? You got to be lying to me. It's not as good as you're saying it is. My grandpa almost walked out of that place almost got his money back
You can't have, we have a great product, we're number one, and then have recalls. You're not the great product. That goes with pride and deceit and wickedness. The words of, of the wicked are in lie and wait for the blood. But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. So we got the wicked and we got the upright. The wicked want, wants to kill you with words. Again, I, I use it all the time. Adolf Hitler. Do you realize Adolf Hitler, all the murder he's going to be charged with of all the Jews, and again, I have heard, I have not done this Cusick study, but borrowing other people's brains who have read about Adolf Hitler in World War II. That guy, I have been told, has never pulled the trigger of any weapon. But out of his mouth, he has caused more people to be murdered. I've read stories about U-boats. I'm interested in U-boats and submarines. And there have been many times that Adolf Hitler visited the U-boat sailors and gave his speech for, uh, to encourage them to go out and sink shipping. As far as I know, I've never heard of Adolf Hitler getting into a U-boat himself and going on a patrol. And if he did, I don't think he set forth a... A torpedo, he may have said at one time, if he did, I'm not sure, you know, torpedo loose. But he didn't push the trigger. His mouth, wicked with weight and blood. Again, Haman, his mouth was set for, I want to kill Mordecai and I want to kill the Jews. The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The mouth of Esther. Esther had a wise and proper mouth of God that turned the tables on Haman. And she had no idea that her uncle, defending her uncle and her people, that he would be in charge and putting in charge of Haman's place. The Jews set forth with their mouth with the blood of Jesus. His blood be upon us and our children. And believe it or not, Pilate and Herod tried to set Jesus Christ free. Pilate's wife tried to set with her mouth, Honey, please, don't have anything to do with that just man. I have had dreams because of him. Where do you stand? There are things that a Christian can do, and probably more so for the workplace, that... I, I, I ought to say something because it, it, whatever it is, it could cause death. It could cause, but no, to keep my job, I'm not going to open my mouth. How about a Christian? I'm not going to tell others about Jesus. I'm just going to be, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven and I'm happy. Then the upright shall deliver them. The upright man is the one that goes out, passes out gospel tracts. The one that opens up a Bible with a lost man. The one that preaches to the lost people. He's trying to deliver. Now, we don't deliver them. God does the increase. But we're trying to deliver. A, a Christian that doesn't say anything about the gospel. Ezekiel says, at the great white throne judgment, their blood is going to be upon your fingers. Even after the judgment seat of Christ, a Christian can be guilty. Did you know that? You know you will be guilty at the great white throne judgment. When, <coughs> when somebody stands up, standing before God, they're lost, they're going to hell, and they say, Joe Soap, Mr. Joe Soap, you step forward. Yeah, that's the man, that's the Christian. That work for my job. Really? What about? He didn't tell me anything about you, Jesus, or anything. Mr. Soap, did you? No, I didn't. And I don't know if that blood is going to be literal. I don't know if Joe Soap is going to look at. Oh. Now, 
Now, just hope the Christians have already been judged and lost. The wood, hay, and stubble, the judgment seat of Christ. But be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that he shall also reap. That, that Christian that keeps his mouth shut is going to stand at the great white throne judgment as that man's condemned. And listen, you can witness and you can preach and you can go out with the gospel. And if one person, the Holy Spirit says, give him a track and you don't, you're still as guilty. And I myself have been guilty, and I've had the Holy Spirit deal with me, and there have been people, and I, uh, I didn't have a track, or I didn't say nothing, or I didn't give nothing. I'm still guilty. It's a harsh verse, verse 5. I mean, verse 6. To be upright, you want to deliver them. You want to tell them how to be saved. Everyone. Paul says, Oh, I wish I could. I wish I could run over that verse. But he comes to the point. He says, "All men, I am pure. The blood of all men. A L L. You know what that means? That means every man that Paul was handcuffed to. In the middle of the night, hey, wake up! What is it, Paul? Have I ever told you about Jesus? Oh, come, no, come on, Paul. Oh, I'm going to punch you. Well, let me punch me and let me tell you about Jesus. It was at midnight in the Philippian jail that him and Silas are, are singing praises to the Lord with a whole bunch of prisoners. How do you know that Paul was preaching to the in that prison? Because the guy said, what must I do to be saved? And none of those prisoners got out when the doors opened. Paul and Silas was at a prison ministry that night, and they closed off with a song service. And God said, well, let me rock the foundation. <laughs> of course, anybody who just read that and don't do what the Bible, they would have no idea what happened that night. The wicked are, are overthrown and are not. They're not going to heaven. But the house of the righteous shall stand. That verse right there. Are you saved or lost? <clears throat> if you have not saved. You are being overthrown right now. John chapter 3 says. You are in condemnation right now. Well I know a rich man that died. And a wicked man that died. And... Yeah. Okay. You don't see where he is now. He may be doing well, but he's not doing well when he is being overthrown presently, even in rich. Hey, listen, riches don't mean nothing to God. The devil could be giving him those riches. So he don't turn to God. But the house of the righteous shall stand. The Bible says about that Philippian jail that him and his house... Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Cornelius' house and his friends' house. Are, they're, they're right now, all the people that were with Cornelius that afternoon when, when Peter showed up, all they that believed on Jesus are in heaven right now, him and his house, his wife and his children. All that Philippian jail is right now, his house, all that, that believed on Jesus, they're in heaven right now. And all those in Cornelius' house that rejected Jesus. All they, the, uh, the Philippian jailers' house that rejected Jesus. They're in hell burning right now. Where are you going to be? Where do you stand? A man shall be commended according to his wisdom. But he that is perverse heart shall be despised. That is definitely opposite in the world in America today. The man with the perverse heart is not despised. He is lifted up and he's exalted. But a man that has wisdom 
is supposed to be condemned, uh, commended, not condemned. But let's take September 19, 2020, in the streets of Daytona Beach, USA, Florida. I come with the wisdom on how to be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they try to shut me up and they call the police on me and they, you know, either you, you shut up or you go to jail. And you ask my lawyer. My lawyer and I talked about that today. I came this close to going to jail. And the lawyer told me today, he said, I thought you were going to go to jail. I'm glad you didn't, but he said, knowing you slightly, when I told that police officer, if he continues, the police officer said, he, he's going, he, I'll, go, I'll arrest him. I don't want to, but I want to arrest him. He said, I had thought that you would. A man of wisdom was threatened to go to jail. And somebody said they have the right illegally was commended. And the one with the words of the gospel of Jesus Christ was despised. We've been at the farmer's market for six years and a few months. We started July six years ago. It is September. There are many who despise the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are many who commend the preaching. I had a guy today, I've been all over the continent and, 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 and I'm preaching. But you know, you got, you, you got to do something better than kicking the stones of the devil. I'm glad my lawyer called and interrupted that whole thing. I don't know how you can say preaching about Jesus and preaching about hell is kicking the stones of the devil. I don't, I'm glad that conversation ended. But there are Christians that will come up to you when you're doing a biblical event as preaching to God. Well, you're turning people away. It's, you're supposed to commend you're not supposed to devise, you're not supposed to despise the preaching of the, of the gospel and then call yourself a Christian. You've got Proverbs 12, 8 reversed. He that is despised, oh, of course. The perverse heart man is supposed to be despised. And has a servant. Oh, that's a bad thing. Today. Is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. That man is dis he's perverse. He's to be he is to be despised. But he's got a servant. He has enough money to pay somebody to do his doings. He's rich. That guy is better than a man that praises himself. And he's such high on himself of pride and loftiness, he can't even afford a loaf of bread. It's pride and laziness. And listen, Daytona Beach, you deal with the homeless many times. And they've got all the answers. They don't even know where, they're so bad, they don't know where their next meal and if they're going to have a next meal. I have dealt in the prison. Great expositors of the Bible, able to correct me. And I would look at him, I, a pastor, come up to me in prison, rebuking me. I'm like, well, pastor, 
I call you before your office that you were in. We are in jail right now, and in about an hour and a half, I get to go home, go with my family. You're still in jail. Where's the problem? Well, I was. Okay, if you weren't framed, I'm just going to say, all right, you were framed. If you're lying to me, now you just made it worse. There are people not dealt with them. They've got all the answers, but they can't even have food. And you can also do that with the welfare system, because if they were to turn off the welfare system, they would have no food. They're only getting paid because the government's giving them money. At least the guy that has a perverse heart, he's rich enough, he's doing something where he can have a servant. And that man that's a spy, he could be an employer hiring an employee to serve him. And the man that, that honors himself, he can be an employee, but I'm not going to work. A righteous man regarded the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Well, hey, there's a PETA verse. PETA? Yeah, please eat tasty animals. Come on, Spy. You, you can say something better about PETA. Pass the ketchup. And the steak sauce. And the barbecue sauce. That's not a PETA verse. Because if you're going to go save the life of a beast, we're going to, we, save, we save the whales, we save the manatees, we see. No, let's read the Bible verse, shall we? A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. Whales are not yours. You don't own the whales. You take care of your dog, your cat, your fish, your birds, your sheep, your cows, whatever. I mean, they're your. You take care of your own. That's what the verse is saying. Now there are people who have animals, dogs, and, all that, and they abuse them. That's that's a violation of that verse. The Bible is against animal abuse. And if you're if you're if your animal your animal is abused, you're not righteous. There it is. But don't go use that verse to say all the animals in the world. But tender mercies of the wicked, okay, are you righteous or are you wicked? Are cruel. Tender mercies of the wicked. The most tender thing that a wicked man can do and think of. God, the Holy Spirit, through Solomon, who has gained the knowledge and wisdom by God, says, even in the wicked man, it's cruel. It's called an alternative motive. You may think he's doing right and proper. But you don't know what's behind that heart. And that's like any man that goes to church. What is his motive to go into that church? There are some men's motive. Well, because, you know, I want to date and marry her. My parents make me do it. Well, there's some good connections in this church. There are some people with money in this church. If I can get in this church and, and, and get them to buy, there was a time when I, when I first got saved, and I won't give the name, but there was an insurance company, and what they did was, right around the time I got saved, they would send people out into the churches, become a member of that church, become part of that perch, and then you can sell them your insurance. I guess that, because I, I haven't heard about it, or...
Oh, they're, they're tender. You're, they're your friend, and they may give you gifts, and then they try to stick you with a, a policy that you don't need. He that tilleth his land, that would be to the Jew. It's about the land when it comes to the Jewish Israelite. But also anybody who tills his land shall be satisfied with bread. Oh, I see what the, the guy number nine didn't do. He didn't work his land. He didn't work. Shall be satisfied with bread. But he that follows vain persons is void of understanding. Hang around with the wrong crowd. Oh, that that's Portland, Oregon in, in America. There bunch of idiots not working, causing destruction, arson fires, and whatever they're doing illegal throughout the states and cities of America. Instead of going to work. And my question is, for those people who are not working, but, but causing troubles and problems, how are they getting their food, I wonder? How are they feeding the government? And they have no understanding. They don't have no understanding of the, the destruction they are doing. Because they're too busy thinking about themselves and they're just vain, empty, nothing. A vain, empty person that's nothing has caused millions, if not billions, if not more dollars damage. And in verses 9 and 11, promote gardening. Get yourself a garden. I'm sorry, I'm living in Florida. And this is the worst place for a garden. Back in Connecticut, I had gardens. The wicked desire the net of evil men. But the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Are you wicked? Or are you righteous? The wicked desire the net of evil men. The wicked desire more evil. The wicked are studying the evil men so they can get involved with evil. Though they are wicked. They are becoming even more wickeder. Again, I'm reminded of a story of a woman in Connecticut that was arrested for bank robbery. And she did her time. She was released. And then there were just a series of bank robberies. They were undisturbed. They had no idea who was doing it. And it was in the media. And it was frequent. Finally, they caught this woman. I don't know how they did, but they caught her. And there was a question somebody posed her, how did you get away with all those burglars? All those bank robberies. How did... You were in prison for bank robbery. You came out and all these bank robberies. How did you get away so long? And she said, well, while I was in prison, I got together with other people who committed bank robberies. And I got together with people who were arrested for, for stealing. And we compared our notes and we... She was in a correctional institute, but it did not correct her. She learned more of her crime. The woman got an education in bank robbery and stealing from the prison. Now notice what the word says. The wicked desire the net of evil men. What is... The great resource of wicked today, the worldwide internet.
I don't look it up because the government does check you out, and I know the government checks what I do. I got enough problem with, you know, things like, you know, looking up Muslims and Catholics and, and everything I look up. I know the government. I, I wonder, and I, I can't prove this, but I wonder if you can look up on the Internet. I wonder if you can design a computer bug to do whatever you want or virus. I wonder if the Internet would tell you how. I can imagine there's web pages out there on how to do specific crimes. The World Wide Web can be used for God and godliness and can be used for education and learning. And yet it can also be used for an aid of crime. But the root of the righteous yield is fruit. Again, are you righteous? Are you yielding fruit? If you're not yielding fruit, Jesus said, by their fruits, you should know them. All right, what kind of fruit are you producing? Are you producing, are you producing biblical fruit? Good, amen, glory to God. Well, if you're not doing what the Bible tells you to do, you're not living according to the Bible and, and proper, by, what kind of fruit you're producing? Evil fruit. Again, we can take these verses in Proverbs and we can look at our lives. And you can sit in a pew of a church under the preaching of a King James Bible and you can be wicked as anything. If you're not doing what the, the Bible says, be ye doers of, uh, of the word. Be ye doers of the word. You're deceiving yourself. If you're not doers of the word, you're deceiving yourself. Boy, have I seen that through churches. The wicked is snared. That's a trap. Think about a fish that got a fish hook in his mouth. It's been trapped. By the transgression of his lips, his big mouth got him in trouble. But the judge shall come out of trouble. Now, did it say the, tr the judge shall have no trouble? No. In Corinthians, uh, the Bible verse that you know, God will lead a way out was my first wife's uh, memory, uh, not memory, uh, her life verse. I don't know that verse. I'm sorry. But it does not say that the, that the, the Christian right, well, we're going to have no trouble. And yet there are ministers out there. There are people on the radio and there are people on the television and there are people in the pulpit who will get up. Your life can be trouble free. No, you're wrong. But yet, God will get you out of your trouble. God will help you. God will give you a way out. Again, going back to prison. I was threatened last week to be arrested. And today, my lawyer showed up and said, with the, with the city official, he's got all right to be here. And I've got even more rights than I thought I had. And, he, and my lawyer told the city official, if he wants to pick up his chair and table, he's got over there where you told him to go. If he wants to pick up his table and chair and camera and he wants to go where he wants to go, he has all right. Now, it was late and I said, no, I'm just going to pack up now. Let me get the paperwork and all that before we come back. I had the trouble. I had, hey, we're going to arrest you. God said, hey, I... You're out of it. Take care of you. And even, let's say, let's say it did go there. Let's say it did go there. You can't be there. Let's say you can't be there. Well, God would say, okay, fine. Close that door. Let's open up a new door. And the worst thing that can happen in your trouble is you die in your trouble and you're absent from the body and present with the Lord. No more troubles. 
But the trouble's not going to stop. If you think the trouble's going to stop, you need to get a, a, a King James Bible, and you need to get a New Testament of the King James Bible, and you need to study two men of the Old Testament, the New Testament. If you think there's no trouble as a Christian, Number one man you need to study in the New Testament is Jesus Christ. And besides the, the, the three days and three nights that he came out of the grave according to the scripture. What was the ending of Jesus Christ and his perfect sinless life? He suffered and died on the cross. How can you say your life is going to be trouble free when our foundation of our salvation died on the cross? Number two man you need to study is the Apostle Paul. Now, if there's anybody who had two people that had great troubles with their own people, Jesus and the Jews, Paul and the Jews and the Christians and the unsaved. And the vendors. Paul got them upset because people were not buying the silver shrines to Diana. Paul got them all upset. And Paul got into trouble. For the word of God and Paul got himself into his own trouble. God told Paul three times, don't go to Jerusalem. And he went to Jerusalem. And he suffered for that. Now, God didn't say, okay, well, Paul, you're a good guy. You know, you just wouldn't listen to me. Come on, let me put you on Rapture Airlines and put you over Rome. No. It took a long time for God to get Paul from Jerusalem to Rome when God told Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. We get in trouble because we get into our own trouble. We get into trouble when we serve God and the devil gets upset. And then we get in trouble because God's either trying to test us or we walk unworthy of God and he's going to chasten us. Or we get into trouble because life is troubling. A man shall be satisfied with the good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto its work. Say the right things. Do the right things with your mouth. Work. What it says. Nowhere do you find a welfare system and support of people who won't do nothing. Now listen, I, I'm in all support. If, if a person, anybody, who is working and can't afford to live because they're not being paid, I think there should be help. I think they should be help. There are people, homeless people I've, I've met on the street, and I, I have tried them out, and I have helped them with needs that they needed. Now, I don't go flying my money out the window. But you got to look at these verses and you got to say, yay or nay? Yay or yay? Where do I stand? And if I'm professing to be right with God, is my profession correct? Or am I deceiving myself? That's the three way. That's the three ways of looking at the, the scripture, the verses, the verses that deal with us. All right, look at the verse. Am I righteous or am I wicked? Well, I seem to be righteous. Is your counsel deceiving you? Maybe. Because remember, Judas. You call me Judas. Judas was with Jesus, his ministry, just as much as Peter, James, and John. Judas healed the sick, raised the dead, 
had the same works as Peter, James, and John. Judas, Peter, James, and John had the same preacher. Did they not? Judas, Peter, James, and John died, didn't they? Wouldn't you? Wow. They had the same preacher. They had the same signs. They had the same wonders. They had, all right. Must be good. Right? Where is Judas today? And where is Peter, James, and John? They're not in the same place. There are people in churches sitting in pews and they're going to die and they're going to end up in hell. Because they deceived themselves. There are people sitting in pews today and they're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And all they're going to get is wood, hay, and stubble, and it's going to be ash. They're not going to get gold, silver, and precious stones. Why? Well, I'm good. You deceived yourself. And then there are there are the men of the ministry that deceive the people. There are people sitting in a pew. Well, I've got to be fine because, you know, I'm the Sunday school teacher. I've been made Sunday school teacher. I guess I got, I mean, a pastor. I'm a deacon of this church. I've been a deacon. I've got to be good because why would the pastor make me a deacon? I'm good because I'm the pastor of this church. And you know how many pastors are going to wake up in hell. You know how many pastors are going to get wood, hay, and stubble only? You know how many deacons will wake up in hell? You know how many deacons are only going to get wood, hay, and stubble? Because they deceive themselves. Friend, we got to look at the, these verses. We got to say, where do I stand? Oh, I'm not wicked. Okay. I'm righteous. All right, now, are you truly righteous? Or are you deceiving yourself? Because we're not 100%. We're all sinners. And that one verse in the Bible, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Even when we say, hey, I'm great at that verse, do a little more study in your life. You may not be so great. Remember, the old hymn was how great thou art. The new hymn for the modern church is how great I am. The great me, myself, and I. You're wicked, vile, and you've been deceived.